As you probably recognize from the intro, I created an erosion simulation with Blender geometry nodes. First, I will show you how the algorithm works and then I will show you the geometry node graph. In this animation, you see how the algorithm works. We let it rain above the mountain geometry and the raindrops roll down the mountains. Vertices on the path downwards will be lowered a little bit. This algorithm creates valleys and canyons. Once a valley is created, more and more raindrops rolling into this valley and it's getting deeper and deeper. Back in the main project, I show you the geometry node graph. Don't be afraid, you don't need to copy it. You can find a link in the video description which leads to this project file. I also defined a few input parameters. The grid size defines the size of a rain emitter. The rain density defines how many raindrops will be created. This value has a massive impact on the performance of a simulation. The scale of a tangent is the speed of the raindrops rolling down the hill. The impact factor is the amount on how much each vertex will be lowered each time. Let's check out the node graph. I labeled everything so you can find the important parts fast. The first box creates the raindrops. I chose icospheres as raindrops to save some geometry. In the next box we define the age for each raindrop and at the end we will destroy old raindrops. The age could also be an input parameter. Next we calculate the falling rain. The raindrops are falling until a distance of 0.49 to the mountain geometry. The big box calculates the tangent vector with a raycast node. We shoot a ray from each icosphere onto the mountain and obtain the normal vector of the impact phase. For the calculation of a tangent, I switch to another project. In this scene, we have our mountain surface, the rounded shape, the rain vector and the normal vector from our raycast node. First we calculate the cross product between the two vectors. We will get a red perpendicular vector. I remove a rain vector and then we calculate the cross product between the red and the blue and we will get the tangent vector. Back in the main project, we calculate the distance from each icosphere to the mountain and save the result as an attribute in each icosphere. And we do the other way around. We save the distance from each vertex in the mountains to the next icosphere. Note that the geometry proximity node doesn't work on instances, so we need to realize the instances first. The next box prevents that the raindrops fall through the surface. This results in strange normals and a tangent vector of zero. The raindrops would be stuck in the geometry. The last step is to lower the geometry. I lowered the close vertices more than the remote ones. The very last box is for cosmetic reasons only. Without this box, the simulation would create lakes at the end of each valley. This simulation is just the beginning. You can improve the simulation with an attribute for the soil, for example. In case of solid rock, there wouldn't be any erosion at all. And in case of sediment, there would be a strong erosion. Another improvement could be avoiding such deep canyons. You can save the original position of each vertex in an attribute and it becomes harder and harder to go more and more deep. That's it for this video and I wish you a lot of fun playing around with the simulation.